Well, we had uh, stocks edging lower yesterday. Today, we're seeing that negative momentum continue. And uh, during the break, you were saying that you've got guys in the office that are perpetual bulls, no matter what the direction of the market is on any given day. Well, uh, the, 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 the bottom line, I think, is there's some long-term value emerging again in the, in the market about uh, a month ago. It was difficult to, to allocate uh, new funds into, into the market. Uh, resources were looking a bit high with the concerns of China and the background. And all of a sudden, you've, you've got this drawback in the resource sectors, and they're starting to, to look attractive again. But they're starting to look attractive for all the wrong reasons. Um, PEs are low, but ROEs are very high. The margins are very high on most of these miners, and that's on the back of a, of a super commodity cycle that I think might be coming to an end. The market is saying this might be coming to an end. And I think the catalyst that we saw was last week, beginning of last week, BHP Bulletin released the iron ore statement or iron ore presentation where they definitely showed that uh, the, the growth in iron ore demand coming from the East will definitely be lower over the next day, uh, decade than the last decade. No real problem with that. There's still strong growth in iron ore demand. But the problem is um, there's a lot of Holes being dug in the ground at the moment, and um, the supply side will catch up so much faster now to the demand side, and um, that will put pressure on margins in the short term. The, the, the profit margins or the marginal cost of production is way, way below what these guys are getting for iron ore and the likes of copper as well. And um, you, we will see some uh, uh, pressure on margins in coming years. Yes, um, good morning. I, I know it's very difficult to sack uh, perma bulls or anybody in South Africa, but at least you could give those people in your office that think that the market's going to go up continually, Le at least give them a written warning and maybe point out to them what we've been talking about with uh, Ben Bernanke. He's uh, sounded a warning about the foundation of the recovery in the US economy. The China data has been appalling, in my opinion, for the last two, two to three months, and even in terms of PMI for five months. And we've got Europe. I mean, Mario Monti, I mean, he's a nice chap and everything, but Super Mario is in danger of becoming stupid Mario because he says that the euro crisis is almost over but we've got the rescue fund being boosted to 1.3 trillion so if, if it's all over why on earth would they do that we've got a general strike in Spain just being uh, just being called S&P says Greek debt must be restructured again Portuguese banks being downgraded I don't see any cause for optimism in the short term anyway well, that's the thing. That's, that's why the market is adopting a wait and see approach. Yesterday, what, what I noticed in the market or the last few trading days is not a, not, not a real amount of selling, uh, except for, I think, Anglo-American, I think, at a, at a lot of volume. But what I noticed in the bid to ask spreads um, is that the bid is gone. And there's no real bias coming into the market again. And they're adopting a wait and see approach, especially towards the commodity sector locally. But what Ben Bernanke is doing is he's actually he's managing expectations. So by saying that he's, uh, he's suspect of the economic recovery, not all the indicators are, are pointing to a sustained recovery. We all know that. We all know that, uh, that, uh, that the increase in, in the, um, or the decrease in the unemployment rate, in the, uh, in the markets, the, the uh, housing market that might be bottoming or might not be bottoming in the US, that's only initial signs. That's not a real full-on recovery that we used to in, in after, after what we've seen the last few years. But at least it's not stagnating. At least there is some growth. And, you know, equities tend to do fairly well in a, in a depressed or in a, in a low inflation environment where they can see some economic growth. I don't think uh, equities yeah. or the, speaking about the broad market, not our market in general, but looking at, at U.S. equities or multinational companies, I don't think they'll do poorly in, in such an environment. And let's focus in on the South African environment. It's, of course, MPC today, and when you're expecting, of course, the repo rate to be hold at, uh, held at 5.5%, but the co concern is around surging inflation, perhaps sitting above that uh, inflation band for some time now. We've got electricity price hikes coming to the fore in Fakauteng. We've got toll roads. We've got a lot of pressures administered prices rising food prices, rising oil prices, and then on the other hand, concerns around slowed, slowing growth. So how, how does the Jill Marcus manage these two conflicting problems? Well, the big difference, uh, usually when we sat here, we, we had to focus a lot on the inflation side. The Reserve Bank has got a deal mandate now. So that, that complete, that's a game changer. She has to look at the unemployment side of things. Uh, and um, 
uh, from the unemployment side, she would argue that most of the uh, cost increases that we saw coming through is, 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 is cost push inflation um, and not demand, demand push inflation. And she would argue that um, unless demand picks up, um, the cost side. Well, she did say, though, that uh, demand or pressures have become more generalized, and that uh, has seemed to be alluding to the fact that we've had a growing demand. And of course, we've seen the recovery in South Africa being consumption led. Well, well the, <laughs> the recovery uh, in South Africa has been con uh, consumption led, but that's your last degree as depended on interest rates being lowered the last few years. That's yeah. over. So, so that's as a so result of. So yeah. this coming year, you will see the real increase in consumption expenditure much lower than the last three years or, or since the recovery started. So uh, if, if, you, if you're holding retail stocks at, at these high multiples, I would definitely think about cutting some of them and yeah. you know uh, taking profits. But, but the, the thing is, um, we're all saying this, we, we know this is a fact, but inflation might be coming down in the second half of this year. It might drop below the target band. I know a lot of the, a lot of economists and some of the, the bigger banks have already um, lowered their forecast for the second half of the year, while the Reserve Bank's forecast is still that we will only see it move within the target band, uh, headline inflation, in the first half of next year. Drikas, what government's doing, not just here in South Africa, but globally has come under uh, extreme scrutiny in terms of how they're managing these cost pressures for business. And in particular, it's that mining sector that ca has come in the spotlight. I mean, we've had uh, bullion miners, certainly Goldfields Chief Executive Nick Holland, uh, very uh, you know, vocal about rising labor costs, oil costs, higher taxes eating into profits, and uh, headlines today out of Brazil that it's not going to be compensating miners is for uh, royalty hikes. So what are you making of that news flow and the added risk it brings onto the table for miners? Well, uh, well, the, the, from an investor point of view, that's once again why there's no bid in the market at the moment. We've got these cost pressures coming through on, for, for, for the miners mm -hmm. and at the same time we see the demand side not falling away. The, I don't think there's going to be a massive implosion in, in the eastern China, but just the fact that, that, that growth from 8% or, or, excuse me, from 10, 11% that we got used to to about 6, 7% a year, the part or the component that's falling away is infrastructure spend. It's gross capital formation that's gotten too big a part of the Eastern economies. That needs to be decreased. The central government in China realizes this. If there is, a, is there some kind of fallout or, or some kind of hard landing in China, I, I doubt that they will put initial funds back into infrastructure spend. The only, uh, you, you would see some other form of, of, of subsidies or something uh, coming into to rescue a hard landing, but I, I don't think you'll see the same kind of infrastructure spend that we saw in, uh, after 08. And so is it all about China? Well, at the moment, for our markets and, and for the RAND as well, it's all about China because the RAND has been structurally strong the last, last seven to eight years because of, of a better in terms of trade. Forget about the medium term or short term in, in and outflows on the capital account. Our terms of trade has, has bettered because we, we saw deflation in manufactured goods uh, across the globe while our exports, coal, gold, platinum, uh, iron ore, has all increased. So our terms of trade have, uh, has bettered. And uh, yeah. if that reverses in coming years, I suspect a structurally a much um, weaker rand. Jekus, I mean, if the moment that inflation falls back within the target band, it's just above there at the moment, 6.1% basis uh, CPI, but as soon as it goes below that 6%, given the fact that there is a sort of a softening uh, tone to the world economy, do you think as soon as it goes back within that band that Jill Marcus and her team will suddenly say, let's cut rates? Is the next move on interest rates in South Africa to the downside, do you think? Uh, I doubt it. Um, first of all, it's about the trajectory. Um, if we get to that, let's say within six months' time, we get back into the target band if we're lucky. Um, then it's about the trajectory from there. Um, one of the main determinants uh, on the inflation rate is, is of course, the RAND. And if the, the world economy is really in such a soft spot and if commodities do tend to go to uh, to the downside, then uh, we might see a weaker rand, and the trajectory might not look that attractive from a from a lower interest rate type of view.